Welcome to Changelog and Friends, a weekly talk show about repeating spider mysteries. Big thanks to our partners at Fly, the home of Changelog.com. Launch your app as close to your users as possible for peak performance. Fly makes it easy. Learn how at fly.io. Okay, let's talk. Yes, let's talk about our friends over at Fire Hydrant real quick. They have a brand new on-call feature called Signals. And what you're about to hear are real reactions from PagerDuty users when seeing Signals from Fire Hydrant for the first time. PagerDuty, I don't want to say they're evil, but they're an evil that we've had to maintain. I know all of our engineering teams, uh, as well as myself, are interested in getting this moving the correct direction. As right now, just managing and maintaining our user seats has become problematic. That's all, that's that's really good, actually. This is this is a consistent problem for us and teams is that covering these sorts of ad hoc timeframes is is very difficult. Um, you know, putting in like overrides and specific days and different mm-hmm. new shifts is is quite onerous. Well, and you did the most important piece, which is didn't tie them together, because that's half the problem with PagerDuty, right? Is I get all these alerts and then I get an incident per alert. And generally speaking, when it goes sideways, you get lots of alerts because lots of things are broken, but you only have one incident. Yeah, I'm super impressed with that because being able to assign to different teams is an issue for us because um, like the one the one alert fires for one team and then it seems like to have to bounce around and it never does, uh, which then means that we have tons of communication issues because like people aren't updated. No, I mean, to, to be open and honest, uh, when can we switch? <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably tired of alerting tools that feel more like a headache than a solution, right? Well, Signals from Fire Hydrant is the alerting and on call tool designed for humans not systems signals puts teams at the center giving you the ultimate control over rules policies and schedules no need to configure your services or do wonky workarounds and just data seamlessly from any source using webhooks and watch as signals filters out the noise alerting you only on what matters Manage tasks like coverage requests and on-call notifications effortlessly within Slack. You can even acknowledge alerts right there. But here's the game changer. Signals natively integrates with Fire Hydrant's full incident management suite. So as soon as you're alerted, you can seamlessly kick off and manage your entire incident inside a single platform. Learn more or switch today at firehydrant.com slash signals. Again, firehydrant.com slash signals. So what I was about to say, and I'll say now. Okay. Is that some of our Ship It listeners are on to us. Oh? You know what I'm talking about? The sample in the theme? Oh, no, you mean the what you've done with the theme. Both. Oh. And, and the outro theme. Do tell. Do you know that one? I mean, you, you wrote it. You made it. <laughs> we got two samples. Oh, you don't know we're using that for an outro now. That's probably why you're so confused. Is it one of the, the punny ones? It's one of the punny ones. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we're using the new theme sample as the new theme, and then we've replaced the old outro music with the other one. <laughs> And our ship it listeners in this channel, they're they're pretty smart people. They are smart people. Like, wait a second, I know what you guys are trying to do to me. <laughs> do to us, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's nice to have a secret, you know, like in plain sight, but it's also nice when that secret kind of slips out for insiders, you know. Indeed. I like an Easter egg. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Well, here we are. We are hanging out with the mysterious breakmaster cylinder. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Our beat freaking residence, mm-hmm. our beat master. Mm-hmm. What else do we call you? BMC. Yes. That's pretty much it. Shirley. Don't call you Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Naked gun. God, is it? That's 80s. It's mm-hmm. going back even further than our ship it samples, which we will not name. We'll let other people figure them out. Oh, I was wondering. Okay. Well, then. We're here to talk about Dance Party. This is our newest album out for a few months now. Okay. By uh, Changelog Beats and Breakmaster Cylinder, a collab as we do. We've been collabing for years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this one's cool. Basically, we're like, hey, BMC, take all of the songs that you've made for us that are 
danceable or they're just like raveable or they, you could hear them potentially in a club. Oops, oops. You could imagine them being played loudly at night. Yes. And put them onto an album. I could be loud at night. And you did it. And I did it. Yes. All right. Is that it? Is that the interview? That's it. That's the show. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Oons, oons, oons. You're welcome. Well, I don't know if we want to go track by track because there's 21 tracks that might we might be here a while. A lot Maybe we can talk about. I love to talk about the mix overall because uh, this this mix is different than our other albums that you've done. Uh, intentionally so. People may be wondering if it was an accident or intentional, and this was very much intentional. Yeah. So I want to talk about that. Adam, what's on your agenda? To uh, tease out of BMC. I almost said uns, 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 but he beat me to it, so. Sorry. Yeah. So we already got that one checked off. <sighs> How do you spell uns, by the way? I don't know. Like um, ounce, maybe? I don't know if you do the double O or the I would o. do like O-O-N-T-Z. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's right. That's How about you? Uns, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I agree with the the mix. So this one was different. And you put like extra sprinkles of sugar on top of this one, I think, too, in terms of the detail in the mix yeah in comparison to others the fading and the mixing and all that stuff tell us about it tell us about it is uh in the 90s when i listen to a lot of trance cds or things like that you can hear the dj trying to switch between tracks and sometimes it goes really well and sometimes it's a little clunky you can hear them do it and mm. i found that endearing so i made it deliberately sound like i was trying to get from one to the other and do it as best as I can, but it wouldn't be totally perfect. I and mean, the beats aren't like off from each other or anything, but like trying to get one song that's in one key into another one that's in a different key, you know, be creative. I don't know. It just sounds good. It feels good. You press play and then the whole thing doesn't stop until the end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's like what happens is tell us how it works. So during one track, the next track overlays it for the last n seconds and it fades from one to the other yeah and then if you just start from track three for instance it's just normal but if you start at the end of track two there's like it's not its own song right it's got some part of the other song into it it has some part to allow for that yeah, smooth fade some track three at the end of track two right i was just listening to it i guess some of them have little pieces of the previous but not too obviously hopefully very little yeah yeah there's a couple that are very, very deliberate yeah where it comes in with it. And I like that, honestly. I, I dug how that worked out. I dug the the detail put in there, you know? Yes, I like details. Yeah. But also, it was like a nostalgia thing for me. I don't know if that's going to mean a lot to too many other people, but... Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I'm really concerned about Paul. <laughs> oh, you're just jumping to the end of the album, dude. Uh, I wouldn't be concerned about Paul. I'd be concerned for Moby. And also... <laughs> yeah. I did not come up with his name. This was <laughs> literally the request for the song. You were like, make it sound like this. Right. I feel like I should clarify. What song are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking what you guys are talking about. No idea. Huh? We could wait then. Let's let it let's let it be a teaser. Okay. A cliffhanger for those who are thinking, gosh, just share the best and we're not gonna do it until the end. Well, I thought we would start with the start because, you know, I'm not Tarantino. I'm more traditional. So I thought, mm -hmm. you know fair. This. You guys hear this? Woo! Yes. We stole this, this. This is different. Did you? Yeah. Well, internally stole it. We stole it from you. We oh, stole okay. It from I was like, so you put this crowd noise in at the beginning of the album. He's like, what? I made that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Who? What? He's like, yeah. What did I? I got friends together. First of all, did yeah. you actually make all those noises or is that like uh, one of those things where you get some wave files? And no, I just found a bunch of crowds. It's like three different ones kind of blended together to keep it from to make them all like roar with approval yeah. at the right moment. Right. And then fade out in a way that doesn't sound too bad. But, yeah. Yes. And a lot of detail in there too, to get that right. Cause you're right. It does naturally perfectly fade. Yes. And then about two ish seconds into the crowd coming up, there's like a sort of a, a swell. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like as if the track began and the track got good and everybody got excited about the track coming into play like as if you're live at the dj okay i pictured it like the dj finally walked out on stage like they're all kind of yeah. waiting yeah. they're like they they hear it coming and they're like oh there they are oh you know? it's the guy yeah it's like oh we're getting started it's called party the, started, the lights so. came on yeah kind of thing yeah and it's like it's time it's time, oh, it's time. yeah for sure so on. and then we stole it from you so now we just put it in random places uh, at the top of the change log for instance yeah. yeah you know we kind of figured that 
I don't know, Adam. Do you just think people would naturally be excited? They'd be, they'd be clapping for us if we came out on stage. You know, honestly, um, when these when these albums come out, I like to reuse a lot of the music we use in them, obviously, in like interstitials. I'm like, why? Yeah. I want to just pay homage to what's been released so that when people go and listen to it, it sounds familiar in a way. And so mm-hmm. I kind of borrowed it temporarily, and now it's kind of stuck. So I, I like it. I think we need to have different variations of it at some point. Like cool. having a crowd begin kind of feels a bit like truly world class, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> but initially, it was just to uh, you know, give a nod to the album out there right, yeah. and have similarity. Change law! Yeah, I'm, exactly. Like, it could be delusions of grandeur. It could be a little bit of that. No way. Have you done any live shows ever? People would cheer. I mean, we've been on stage and done some stuff, but not uh, yeah. yeah, some clapping. I don't know if I would say to cheers. We've had claps. I don't think we've ever had cheers. But I would love, you know, if we could like work in like, Adam Stachowiak, I love you. You know? <laughs> I could totally do that. <laughs> oh, my god! I'll stand way away from the, from the microphone. We could just imagine it into existence. Do you have nicknames like the stack? Uh, do you have any nicknames? The stack, yeah. Mm-hmm. We could definitely do some nicknames. Some people call me stack. Some call me stacks with an S at the end, plural. Change it to an X and there's your DJ name already. There you Ooh. go. Yeah. I don't know if Skrillex would allow it. It's too close. Stacks, true. Skrillex. <laughs> yeah, he'd come, he'd come for true. it. No, he's in Vegas doing something. Uh, clapping is like cheering of the hands. That's That's on the way. Yeah, I think we're on our way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's what I think would happen, actually. You know, mm-hmm. if we ever did do, because we we hint and we tease and we talk about a conference, a party, a meetup, a show, mm-hmm. a hangout. Mm-hmm. We've never done any of these things. But every time we're talking about it, behind the scenes, we're like, do you think BMC would come and DJ that thing live? You know? Thank you. And Adam's like, oh, I'm sure. And I'm like, I'm not sure. but I've I already so. asked him. Oh, yeah. We already got a yes. So. That's where we, I think we would get our cheer for the first time is like when you drop the beat oh initially live for change log listeners and friends, <laughs> that's when I think our claps are going to turn into cheers for the first time. That would be an honor. I would cheer. I would Aww, cheer. thanks. Yeah. I would have to join the party and, and cheer as well. <laughs> From peer pressure. Yeah. Well, oh. pure joy, really. Uh, pure joy. Pure joy. That's good. Tapped right into my intravenous vein there. It's just like, got it. Nice. The joy is in there. <laughs> oh, I love Intravenously. That. Wow. The BMC has entered the building, and that's how it goes. <laughs> that's awesome. But uh, the way this album opens up is like the truly good beat, though. I mean, you got the party started, Jared. You kind of played that. There's like, what, 20 seconds of cheer, and then, yeah, you know, that beat drops. And then we drop the bump on a log. <laughs> Yeah, I do like these for openers. That bass is like sparse and Mr. Oizo-ish, if you ever heard right. that song a long time ago. That's my favorite part. My house. What do you call that, though? Waka waka waka? Uh, it's a synthesizer. It's a little atonal. I mean, it has pitch, but it's like not notes necessarily, is it? I don't know. <laughs> This is what I've always loved about electronic music is the layers, right? Like you're just layering on more sounds over time. That's like the move, isn't it? Yeah. You're supposed to be thinking about like how many sounds can a listener like really process at once. I'm going to stop that so we can talk to each other. But man, yeah, they're just like, it just starts simple and then it just like more and more and more. And it's very mathematical. Mm, I hope so. Right? Like it has to be timed out, right? Otherwise it's weird. I like weird math stuff. I mean, that one isn't an example of it, but I like, you know instruments with different length patterns kind of overlapping gotcha yeah that's some of your taste there but yeah yeah starts off with a banger bump on a log Mm -hmm. i think the other one that we potentially considered was bass is the place to start it out yeah and Prior to that, you had something entirely different, and I was like, it has to start with a banger. Remember that? Yes, you were right. What were you starting with? Do you remember? I don't know. Four to the floor. One of these uh, Halt and Catch Fire songs, maybe? Right. Of which there are many. They're good, but they're not bumping a log. Right. This is, this is way more more amped. I agree. It was a good choice. Oh, yeah. The way it comes in is is like, this is a party. Oh, it's a party. And uh, you had better dance. <laughs> or else. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dancing is mandatory. For sure. I mean, whenever I whenever this officially dropped on Spotify and was listenable to the world, mm-hmm. I think actually it might have been the Dropbox version of it before we actually it was out there. Oh yeah. I played it in my living room for my kids and they love to dance. We always have dance parties. Good. Like, we literally have dance parties already. Mm-hmm. And so we'll throw various types of music like this onto the speakers, bump it to 75, 80, whatever the number is, like basically almost 100. Yeah. And uh, we just rock it out. And these kids literally danced the yeah. entire album. Oh, sweet. The whole album. I mean, I skipped over some of the middle parts sure. to get to the, because I was actually thinking like, I'm QAing this. Like, how does this sound <laughs> on real speakers, really loud, as if I'm a listener out there enjoying it in my living room on my big banging speakers. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm just going at it, basically. Sweet. So I skipped a little bit, but for a you know the whole album, dancing it out the whole way. No well, kids' reactions is perfect. They were loving it. They had showers afterwards and went right to bed directly. <laughs> you just <laughs> you warm out, BMC. This album will you warm, warm out, out your children. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's high praise. That's super high praise. And uh, the speakers, just to be super nerdy, the speakers I had them on were Klipsch Pro 250 RPW LCRs. Okay. Just so you know, those have dual five and a quarter stereo metallic woofers in them, a one inch titanium dome tweeter, matted to a composite coated hybrid cross section Tractix horn. Just so you know. Just off the top of your head, huh? Just so Just you off know. Just the top of your head. <laughs> and probably about 100 watts at least per speaker. Sweet. Maybe 150 per speaker. Yeah. So that's a decent beat. You know, that's a decent bump. Do you know what he's talking about? Because I know no, Klipsch no, is, no, but no. beyond that, I just. Remember Skull Candy head buds? I mean, earbuds? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know those. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I some That's Yamaha. what this is designed to sound good on. Yeah, right. Well, he knows Dr. Klipsch. I vaguely he should. But I now that I know that, I, please listen to all the music and tell me how it bumps because that's going to be just the best possible system. That's where I test things at. I test things in that living room or in the theater with similar speakers. But Klipsch, Dr. Klipsch, was um, made famous the Klipsch horn. Is this old school back in the 50s, 60s, invented this like furniture style speaker. Mm. And it's just magnificent to look at as a speaker. Cool. And all the tech that Klipsch has today has come from his original. He's a physicist. You know, he's, he's all about sound design and whatnot. Yeah. And he designed some amazing speakers. And so Klipsch is my brand. That's what I love. Excellent. Well, speaking of playing it for your kids, this reminds me of the initial Go Time theme song, which we made years and years and years ago together you made most of it Mm -hmm. we gave you feedback Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i remember playing it for ezra when he was two he's like almost 10 now so it had to be eight years ago and i remember he's sitting at the kitchen table i had a video of this and i I remember sending it to you yes i do too. and he just goes crazy with the head bumps and then it finally ends and he goes he's like will you play that again for me dad or something real cute What? Find another one for me. Yes. And I was like, he was just that go time theme song. That's all I wanted to listen to. Excellent. Yeah. That's awesome. So you rate highly with the youth. I, I care about that. <laughs> I really do. It sounded sarcastic, but I think no, it's, no, I think no. it was sincere. They'll tell you if something's terrible. That's true. Or they'll just like walk away and be like, you know. I mean, when they're dancing, it's all out of pure vibes. Like they're not. There's no putting on airs, right? Totally. Yes. And if they don't want to dance, they're not going to. They're like, mm-hmm. eh, I don't. Yeah. The song isn't moving me. No. So that is a high praise. No, it's it's always been like, yeah. What's up, friends? This episode is brought to you by one of my good friends, one of my best friends, actually, one of our good friends, Tailscale. And if you've heard me on a podcast, you've heard me mention Tailscale several times in unsponsored ways because I just love Tailscale. And I reached out to them and said, hey, we're talking to a lot of developers 
I love Tailscale. I'd love to have you guys sponsor us and they reciprocated. So what is Tailscale? Well, Tailscale is a programmable networking software that is private and secure by default, which makes it the easiest way to connect devices and services to each other wherever they are. You get secure remote access to production, databases, servers, Kubernetes, VPCs, on-prem stuff, anything. It's fast, like really, really fast. And you can install it anywhere. Windows, Linux, BSD, Mac OS, iOS, Android. It is an easy to deploy, zero config, no fuss VPN. It is zero trust network access that every organization can use. So what can you do with Tailscale? You can build simple networks across complex infrastructure. They have ACL policies to securely control access to devices and services with their next gen network access controls. You can replace legacy VPN infrastructure in just a few minutes. You can use device posture management to granularly restrict access to resources based on a wide range of attributes like OS version, user location, and more. You can save time with a trusted and proven networking solution that just works. You can transform networking security with a modernized set of solutions built on revolutionary protocols designed for today's mobile and multi-cloud era. You can securely connect to anything, no matter what operating system, hardware type, or configuration is in place, such as your GitHub runner to a database on-prem. You can authenticate without authentication using Tailscale's app connectors. You can send files securely to any node on your Tailnet using Taildrop. You can code from your iPad even with Tailscale and VS Code Server. There's just so much you could do with Tailscale. Like the limits are literally limitless. And that's why I love Tailscale. I've got 28 machines personally that I manage on my Tailnet. And if you've heard me talk on the podcast, you've heard me mention Tailscale at least once or twice. But today you can try Tailscale for free up to 100 devices like me and three users for free at Tailscale.com. No credit card required. Again, it's free up to 100 devices and three users all for free at Tailscale.com. No credit card required. Have fun. Take us to through the halt and catches because this was halt and catch fire inspired music. There's about is there four of them? Halt and catch fire. Halt and catch fire. Halt and do not pass go. Uh-huh. Halt and catch a cold. <laughs> yes. Which is awesome. And then uh, my favorite, halt and catch a tori, which yes. I had to look up. That's like a pasta dish or something. Pasta dish. Yeah. Halt and catch a tori. Halt and catch a tori. Not catch a tori. Right. It's all one word. It's an Italian word. Um, I think Adam was bugging you for some Halt and Catch Fire inspired stuff, and I, it must have went on for a while because you ended up with a lot of tracks. Yeah, he super was. You super were. Uh, <laughs> wait, right? There's the well, story. The, the, <laughs> Is there more? The, yeah, if you ever listen to it, it has it has really really specific sound to it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so eighties, early nineties, maybe eighties kind of vibe. BMC, what's your favorite of these four? We'll play a few seconds from it here. The first one's my favorite. Uh, halt and Catch Fire. All right. That's probably the first one we did, too, so it's a little closer to the, yeah. Oh, yeah, this was at the top of the changelog. Still is, isn't it? Yeah, Adam uses this one as his intro. Yeah, I like like that broken up little synth thing that's, like, barely appearing. There's a gate on it, so it kind of crackles. If that means anything. Why does it crackle? Because there's a gate that. on it. That, because yeah. it will only play when it's reached a certain volume level. And then everything under okay. that gets cut off immediately. So it's a slow, I mean a fast attack, fast release. And that's kind of cool. You can make things sound really electronic, like anything. I do this with uh, cellos and things, or flutes, or whatever. It will just crackle into existence, and then it will disappear, because whatever was before it was not quite yeah. loud enough. Yeah. Gotcha. That's interesting. Sounds techy. I actually go between those two. I don't. I don't always do that one. I do a couple of the others. So basically, all the Halton's catch whatevers uh, I've used for intros. Dig those ones, of course. What else do I use for intros? I don't even know the name of it. It's not how they sound. Yeah, the, the titles mean nothing. 
Yeah, the titles are meaningless, which is why sometimes you're like, I have to hear it first to even know what you're talking about. You can oh, say yeah. the name. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Like impetuous loggers for change. I can't even imagine what that sounds like right now. But. Uh, no. So, <laughs> how many titles can I put log in? Yeah, you've done a pretty good job with that. Of the titles, though, of the Halt titles, I have to admit, Halt and Do Not Pass Go is just chef's kiss. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Glad. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Tetris Metris, which is jumping the gun a little bit, but... Oh, we can go there. Oh, yeah, Tetris Metris. That's for that documentary you saw about Tetris. Yeah, right. The, the Tetris, the movie. Tetris, the movie. Which I got all excited about, and then I never watched it. It's kind of what I do. It's nonfiction, right? I mean, it's a documentary. It's not like... Well, no, it's a, it's a dramatic fiction oh, okay. of a true story. Got it. Yeah. What do you call those? Dramatization. Yeah, a dramatization of a true story, which yeah. was interesting... Particularly to us, because Adam actually interviewed the guy in which it was dramatizing. Really? Hank Rogers, yeah. It was really interesting to watch that, considering the conversation and I guess how old that conversation is in comparison to, I guess, just the entropy of Tetris, really. Mm. You can't stop Tetris, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. the, the film is evident of that. I won't ruin it for anybody, but it gets out. It can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. You can't stop the signal. Yeah. it uh, Licensing couldn't stop it. Governments couldn't stop it. Wow! And uh, it's really, it's really interesting how the game began. And like, it began like as a, a programmer's love to program, but then to program a game. Mm -hmm. And that to me was like the beautiful part of it was the, the connection between Hank Rogers and the fellow that created it. I think his name is Sergey, if I recall correctly. Was based on programming, like what language, how was it written, you know, all the stuff. It wasn't like. It was the game too, but then it was also how was the game written to change it to be more playable and change the rules of the game. That's so cool. It's pretty wild. So you watched it. I think it was like on Apple TV Plus or something. And then you said, this music is good. Yeah. You being Adam. Right. And then he said, BMC. Uh -huh. Tetris, Metris, please. <laughs> I said, okay. Well, I don't know if it came like, I think I was like, what did I say to you, BMC? I was just like, this album all the music in this entire film is amazing go watch the film mm -hmm. and be inspired this is what i think probably what i said some version of that yeah because the the music does have or sorry the movie does have phenomenal you know a phenomenal soundtrack it's really well done yeah and so i was like you know i think that's the beauty of what we do is is uh in this version of podcasting jerry's that we we can sort of like be influenced by the world and share that back with bmc and say Please make similarities. Right. You know, be inspired by X and let's bring that into this. I feel like that's the ultimate way to remix the world. Like mm -hmm. everything's just a remix anyways. And I think it's less about let's have what they have, but more like, man, that's so cool. Let's do versions of that to spread that version more into the world. Yeah. They're using techniques or sounds or things that you can evolve. For sure. Out. Remix the world. Yes. I love a yeah, good homage. Absolutely. So BMC, did you go actually watch Tetris or did you just go listen to some of the music and then say Tetris Metris? Uh, no, I didn't watch it, although I'm watching it in my head overlaid over everything right now because all you have to say is Tetris and I'm like trying to get lines together. Wow, that's mm -hmm. very... Uh, oh, no, but I, I listened to the theme song. I played it a lot. That's what I did. And then this came out the other end right here. Oh yeah, you definitely use this one, Adam. Yeah. See yeah. that da, da 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 just begs for someone to start talking right there, doesn't it? Oh yeah, okay. I think so. It's good to know stuff. The like second that. one is off by one beat, right? It's on the up. Yeah. Right. E end up. Yeah. Yeah. Was it the second Very 16th cool. note? If you want to be. Okay. The yeah, second I, 16th, Adam. Yeah, exactly. Sorry about that. No, I'm not correcting you. <laughs> I knew it was on the up though, at least. No, you notice it at all yeah. it, I think still a track the theme song uses the same sounds and definitely at the same BPM that's like the first thing you can do to make a song sound like another song is don't deviate from the BPM the tempo uh, love that one love that so one so good yeah and it's kind of chill too so it is begging for someone to talk over the top of it I mean some tracks where you're like I love this track but I couldn't use it as a as a bed 
during yeah. a read because yeah. it's just too much going on. Like you're just going to be fighting with it. Mm -hmm. But especially the first part of that is just very melodic and simple mm -hmm. and doesn't have a lot of craziness to it. And so yeah. you can just talk right over the top of it. I'll write more of that. How about? It's good. As BMC would say, I like it. Maybe you would like it too. I do like it. <laughs> I'm glad you like it too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was very happy with that track though. Very, very happy with that track. When I, when I heard it, I was like, you, you, <laughs> you, yeah. you knocked it out of the park. Oh my gosh. This is, this is absolute fire. Oh, Give me excellent. more. Turn it up. Yeah, go, 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 go. Excellent. Yeah, for real. Like I, you know, I'll pause for a second and just gush for one second, Jared. Do you mind if I gush just a, a brief moment? As long as we can clean up afterwards. Seriously. Working with you is so freaking awesome. It really is. Just being able to like be inspired by something and share that with you. And then like something cool comes out the other end that is not just like mostly good. It's like really good to me is the absolute magic of some of the stuff we do. Like you're of the secret sauces. You're like, like I, I, I close the curtain and I immediately shake the bottle you're in. Right. And I pour you out all, all over the stuff we do. <laughs> and then it's just amazing. Okay. Stop gushing. It's getting weird. <laughs> uh, oh, a little BMC. It's like BFF. You're like the BFF, man. You're the BMC BFF. It's just so good. So good. <laughs> It's hard to know how right. to respond to that specifically, but that's really nice. <laughs> right? That's just very it's, nice. It's I'm really glad. Nice. I don't have anything to say about my nice. sauciness per se, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you didn't just hang up and leave is, you know, says a lot. <laughs> Screw this. It's a, it speaks volumes, BMC. Uh, I'm still here sorry after that. that. Feeling uncomfortable and need some more space. You got to illustrate things, you know. You got to give people a, a mental picture. Oh, agreed. That, agreed, agreed. You know that what I'm was saying? a picture, yeah. Absolutely. Some pictures you don't have to give to people, though. You could give mm. other pictures. But BMC is still here, so he's here for it. Oh, I'm here. Well, speaking of making things extra special and sprinkling, what did you say? I don't even know what you said. I tuned it out once I started getting weird. Uh, gushing. <laughs> just... Just sprinkle you all sprinkle. over. Sprinkle, yes. Well, in fact, I said shook the bottle and pour you all over. Right, it wasn't you know. sprinkle. That's why I stopped myself. In it. Didn't you say draw the blinds first, though? I said close the curtain. <laughs> close okay. the curtain in the shower, BMC. He's taking a well, shower. No, 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 no. It's it's the <laughs> magician. It's the the great Oz. You can't see oh. what's happening back here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah my yeah. magic potions. Oh, I thought you were taking a shower and you were like, no. like the shampoo was just what BMC and you were just spraying it. No, this is like this is like the great Oz closing the curtain. And you can't see what's back here. I've got okay. magic things happening, and BMC's one of the bottles I grab and I shake, mm -hmm. and I pour onto our podcast. Okay, so when 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 you said paint a picture, you had painted a different picture in my head than you thought you were painting. Well, that's because you got a dirty mind. I can't help that. No, I okay. was. I have a clean mind. I thought you were taking a shower because <laughs> you close the curtain and then you grab the bottle and you start spraying it. I figure you're just lathering up. <laughs> okay, so let's get into this. Am I more shampoo or conditioner? Neither. Be, be brutally honest with me. Brutally honest. <laughs> I would say you're conditioner. Yeah. Because you go on second and make it all silky smooth, you know? <laughs> you're the three in one. You're the body wash, you're the oh, shampoo, dude. and you're the conditioner. All right. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's get back to the music, okay, guys? Well, I think we're still talking about the music. You made me... You made me remember that we haven't spoken to you since State of the Log. W weren't you on the show prior to, or was it after? Mm, before, I think. It was before because sure. people enjoyed that episode last year. Yeah, so we had Jamie Tanna on the show, and he had been a benefactor of your remixes. And so we talked about you and with him and what it felt like to receive a remix. That was oh, kind of cool. Yeah. But we haven't talked to you about what it, I mean, you took State of the Log to the next level this that year. That was fun. It was, See? It was probably like three times better than usual, Ooh. and we're going to have to have you do it every year probably Because I'm three and one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to do that. Let's do it every time. You're talking about cutting up people's messages into music. Huh? Yeah, the voicemails. So uh, cool. That's fun. I mean, that was cool. That's like old school when I was like a little kid, and I had radio and a double tape deck, and I'd just record certain words and then mash them together on the second tape and make, you know, the Muppets say horrible things or something. Right. Yeah. That was amazing. That's just fun. So much so that I've been reusing those as transitions sometimes. Yeah. Uh, especially like uh, enjoy the drop and a few other phrases that people said that 
you then put music to. Well, yeah, and they also said a bunch of perfect stuff. Yeah, they were really nice. Couldn't have been happier. Yeah. I almost makes me want to do more states of the logs just so we can have more voicemails, more remixes. But, you know, too much of a good thing can be. Your listeners are cool. Too much. Yeah, they are. All right, back to Dance Party, though. All right. A couple of these tracks have names like they could be on a different album of ours, perhaps Mm. our Next Level album, because we have Tetris. Of course, there's Rainbow Toad Club. That sounds like it's a video game inspired track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ridley Gonna Ridley, I believe that's based off of Metroid. Because yes. Ridley's that's the main old. character in Metroid, mm-hmm. right? That's a pretty old one for us, I think. It it's is. Like several years old. Same with Sentient Refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because everyone knows what that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds scary to me. So remind me, BMC, why are some of these tracks on this track or on this album and not on Next Level, our video game theme-inspired ones? You said why they're not? Yeah, like wouldn't those fit well over there? Do you remember why we didn't put them in that one? Because Next Level was largely, although not entirely, trying to use just sounds from like a video game thing. Like if it was a Nintendo Castlevania level, which you love Castlevania levels. Adam loves Castlevania levels. I didn't want to add like beats to it necessarily, like modern beats. It was just writing the whole thing using that. Plus, I guess we had Dance Party in mind even when we were making that one. Right. So I kept most of the, the four to the floor. I kept that for later. Well, I have to say my two favorite tracks on this one are the 80s. I don't know. uh, Miami Bites, 1984, and Pole Reposition, which I think was based off of Pole Position. That was a video game one, but very much sounds sounds like it belongs in an 80s car chase or something, you know? Yeah, I'm confused about that because it's a video game, right? But the original song Mm. has like... Rockin' studio guitar kind of... No, wait, what do I mean? Not studio. Yeah, like... mm. Let's play a little bit of it here. In-house musicians. Oh, I'm on the highway to the danger zone already. Yeah, there's a little bit of highway to the danger zone there. Which brings me to the 80s. Now, this does feel like a video game, like F-Zero or some sort of racing game. Mm. But even more so, like Knight Rider, maybe? Knight Rider vibes? I don't Mm. know. David Hasselhoff just makes me think of David Hasselhoff. (laughs) As many things do. The the level of cheese, yeah. I thought there was a guitar solo in this. Yeah, this track is just awesome. I'll turn it off now because I could listen to the whole thing. But yeah, so there was several renditions of that on YouTube, and I found one where, and I think this is the one you actually was inspired by, was one that actually had like multiple uh, instruments. I suppose like pe- the same person playing multiple instruments of the pole reposition or pole position. Oh, one of those like videos with all the mini screens inside it where they're playing every yeah exactly we're like that's cool yeah i think it was something like that and so pole position was a popular game on atari i believe was it an atari i thought it was mm-hmm. an nes but it's old i can picture it let me see it was definitely color graphics i think it was atari like the joust days yes uh released by namco in 82 and licensed to atari inc that would have been really advanced then, if it's the same time as Joust around there. This is way more advanced. So yeah, the Atari 2600 was the original, and I think it probably got remade onto other things. Yeah. But yes, you got it right, Atari. And I was just like, let me just go back in my repertoire of like games from games from old. Mm-hmm. And what were the themes? Hubert was one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one, obviously... And several others, Metroid and Castlevania. And original, right. original Donkey Kong. Sonic and all the things. Yeah. Donkey Kong Country, a lot of those. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. I love doing the Sonic ones, though. Those are too much fun. I found the, the the virtual instrument that is the same as the sound card they use for the Genesis, and it's just too good. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's awesome. I dug the uh, the theme remixes based on those. Yeah. Those were cool. Yeah, and those are on our theme songs album the, <laughs> the second half of the theme songs theme songs album 
is all the Sonic remixes of the original theme songs. Yeah. Bing bong. Which is almost more fun to listen to than the originals. Not that they're not good. They're just so much fun to listen to that in the second half. It's got nostalgia. There's just no end to the goodness. The no sauce just goodness. keeps coming. Are you guys interested at all in uh, what the listeners are listening to? Yes. Absolutely. Well, then. Taylor Swift. Let me sign into our account and see see what. Oh, no. Two step authentication. What happened here? Oh, God. KBMC, stall for us. Oh. uh, Was that the bonus stage with the like the big sphere where you had to jump over? It doesn't matter. But I am stalling. (laughs) But I am stalling. This sentence proves it as well. All right, Adam, stall for us. I was thinking about Take On Me by uh-huh. Aha uh-huh. <laughs> as a remix in the future. Mm. It might be my favorite song ever. Ah, uh, Really? Oh, yeah. If that song comes on, I'm happy. Sure. But that's the only one? Well, there's many more, of course, but that's a really solid song. You know, if it's playing, There are songs that just you're never sorry to hear it ever. Yeah, and that's one of them. I'll listen to it by Weezer. I'll listen to it by the original band, Aha, of course. There's been many versions of There's an acapella version of it. It's really like it's uh, probably 20 years after the original recording. This is phenomenal. Mm. And the, the lyrics are not, it's not just a good song. It's good lyrics too, in my opinion. Mm. You know, they have meaning. Sure. And then, of course, back in the MP- MTV days, like I grew up in the 80s, 90s. So, you know, I want my MTV basically. Right. Mm-hmm. But the original music video, gosh was like quintessential of course like it was this real life photography video mixed with cartoon hmm. so cool i like that stuff have you seen it no i'm picturing a what? different video yeah oh my gosh bmc we have to we have to steep you in my tastes yeah please i'm gonna keep using uh oh, cooking metaphors yeah. and uh and verbs to describe oh i things. love cooking metaphors for music you know what I learned to do uh, is uh, saute tomato paste on its own before you use it in something. That's that's really good. Mm-hmm. That's the mix. Maybe like uh, spaghetti. Yeah, or Indian food, particularly. But like, okay. but it it transforms it a bit. Hmm. Way better. Thank you. Good How much do you have to stall here, Jared? Oh, we're still stalling. Oh, you guys are stalling. I thought you were just talking. <laughs> I was stalling. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> You know what version of that I've heard most recently is a kid on Spotify replacing the lyrics to make it about Minecraft and like practically swallowing the microphone. Like it's just so distorted. And that's immediately what I think of when you say take on me. And that's probably a shame. Oh, well, that's I'm sad. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's well, cool. We'll have to fix that. All right, let's stop stalling. It's getting sad. Okay, so on Spotify, at least. Mm-hmm. Our most popular song, which maybe this is good timing for you to to go there, Adam, is Paul Oakenfold fights Moby <laughs> in the alley behind a Pan Asian restaurant. That's our top song on Spotify. I'm just saying over the last month, yeah. not not of all time. They're all time stats that seem to be mm. not working for me. So that's why totally I, makes sense to me. <sighs> Were you suggesting so, that Moby would win? Because I just don't know. <laughs> Was I suggesting? Wow. Yeah, at the beginning, you're like, let's, you know, sorry for Paul. Let's feel sorry for Paul, but I feel like Moby's a vegan. <laughs> well, you know how I feel, BMC, because my original title was Paul Oakenfold Beats Up Moby. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I tried to soften it. And somewhat. you changed it to be more politically correct. Yeah. How do we always end up almost blasting Moby? This happened <laughs> in the last interview, too. Yeah, that was like a therapy session. Tell us why you don't like Moby. Well, this know? is why I think you came up with this was because of that. Yeah. This week, yeah, this came out of la- our last episode together because we were talking about how we would give you ridiculous requests mm-hmm. and you would fulfill them. No, I like and that. then shortly thereafter, and we also talked about your disdain for Moby. That's tongue in cheek. I feel like and, I avoided because yeah. I could. No. And then afterwards, you're like, hey, we, maybe we should put a few new tracks on dance party. Like we, maybe we should make some more songs. Definitely. And you took requests. Mm -hmm. And I just try to think of the most ridiculous thing I could. You did, yeah. Because I was trying to challenge you. You did very well. And the other one I I requested didn't actually get made. I can't remember what it was, but it had something to do with Andre 3000. But this one got made. 
And I just said, I want you to write a song called Paul Oakenfold Beats Up Moby in the alley behind a sushi restaurant. Now, you refused to do that, but you agreed to write one that's very similar. No, you didn't refuse, but we just renamed it over time. I changed it to Pan-Asian because it uses a lot of Shaw Brothers Kung Fu samples, which is not Japanese. Right. So a very nice touch there. <laughs> nice detail that I would have missed. Let's get it correct. And you also wanted to say Paul Oakenfold fights Moby versus beats up Moby. Yeah. I don't know. Which I'm fine for with. Moby, I guess. Yeah. I think a lot of people pick on Moby. Right. I don't need to be. Yeah. Like once Eminem did it, pretty much it was like open season on Moby. <laughs> don't you think, Adam? I didn't know Eminem did that, but I've always been a a Moby fan, I guess. Not like I, a I deep like fan. Moby's music. Yeah, but like, yeah. You like that album play. Yeah, agreed. That's that. pretty much the one that I know. That's good. But you don't remember that Eminem track when he dissed Moby? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I do recall that. And lyrically, he dissed him. Not an interview. Okay. Yeah, it was a track. The way true rappers diss is via tracks. Right? Yeah, exactly. But he, he didn't just like call him a dweeb or something. He's like, nobody listens to Moby. Like he came out and said that. Like, no, you know, no one listens to Moby. Was that the same one he was mentioning Britney Spears? I think so. Yeah. That was back when Eminem could do nothing but drop fire every album, every track. Was I just think it was a, Real Slim Shady is the track. Uh, quite possibly. Because that was the one he was like, yeah, I think so. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway, so ever since then, people have been picking on Moby. I do like some of Moby's music. I don't have any problem with the guy. Don't even know him. Mm. But I thought it'd be funny to have Paul Oakenfold beat him up in a song title. That's all. That's all. (laughs) Regardless, this is what came out. So from that request, I I didn't give you any more information. I just gave you that. Oh, yeah. And you went and came up with this. That's the Paul Oakenfold bit, for sure. That definitely has Paul Oakenfold written all over it. Oh, the Moby bit is, it uses the line from Porcelain. It goes, and this is goodbye. It has right. the little, like, four notes. Five notes. So that's a nod to Moby. And then there's, like, kung fu noises. Love that stuff. <clears throat> that's it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. This, this is goodbye. This is a good song. Thanks. In fact, when I first listened to it, I thought, he's doing the kung fu noises because of the song title, but I wonder if it just doesn't even need them. And maybe they're distracting. But then I got used to them and I like them now, so I kind of got over it. But I wonder what other people think about that. Okay. See, I like them now, but at first I was like, huh. Yeah, it could be too far. I mean, like, it makes it very... But it makes me actually visualize a fight. It just sounds good. It's punctuation. I don't know. It's, it's nice yeah. rhythmically, but it doesn't fit with change log in any way. True. Thematically, I think. And I don't think we used it for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Except for this. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would put this in a, to an episode necessarily. Yeah, where Maybe are you going to find matching context for this? An <laughs> outro. <laughs> An outro or like something where yeah where maybe a debate episode you know where the, ah! okay sure yeah it definitely was just a fun diversion and just a well that's it's good. just here for the dance party it's just here for the yeah. i'm all about fun diversion and the kids on spotify seem to like it more okay. than our other stuff at least cool mm. well i have some good news about this track good news that you didn't even know so what's that this is brand new information straight from Spotify's API. When you search for Paul Oakenfold under <laughs> tracks, which is like list the songs that reference or are attached to Paul Oakenfold, this track comes up as 234. Now, I believe Moby has somehow gamed the algorithm because it is nowhere in existence in Moby's search. Turns out lots of people do listen to Moby. Yeah. Is he still doing stuff? You know, I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, I don't care. Don't answer is your, that. Is your shirt a Godfather thing? I can only see the very top, but the font looks Godfathery. Me? Yeah. It's the change log. It's this is the old school change log. That's nice. The original. The OG. Yeah. Okay. And we got a favorite song off of this album or overall on this whole track. Yeah, this whole album. 
Well, I shared mine. Miami Bites and Pole Reposition are the two. I, I probably couldn't pick from those two. Mm. I mean, I think I like, I do like Bump on a Log. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to really be good. boring, but I like the Orange Knight. The Orange Knight's so deep in the track list that I don't always get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Second to last. Yeah, this one could have been like where Bump on a Log is almost. Yeah, it could have opened up too. Close. Yeah. It takes a little no, longer I like to bump get better. to it. Yeah. I do too. But. I don't know. It's a, this has got to be one that you can't really talk over either. Why do you let me keep doing this? A lot. Well, you know, some of them are just good. <laughs> uh, and we can't stop you, honestly. Not all of our music needs to be talked over either. Yeah, that's true. Not everything's a bumper, I realize, but. Yeah. I don't like to. Uh, Resist art, honestly. I like to just let it flow. I like that about you. Uh, my favorite is Dusk Under a Flaming Moon. Oh, that's a good one, too. Mm, that's the same style as Jared's favorite. It is. Mm -hmm. In particular, the, the, middle tra the middle section of it just, like, gets really good. You got to listen to it for a bit to get there, though. This is a longer track. It's almost three minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's just... You could tug over this one, no problem. Yeah. This also feels like I'm driving at nighttime. Yes. It's an adventure. Driving at nighttime, and it's really saturated neon pink and purple. Yeah, exactly. In my head. Like Tron, almost? Sure. I'm always thinking that movie Drive, it had that song Night Call in it. That was a Oh, little, yeah. Uh, was Drive was a good movie. Yeah, this track is awesome. When this like guitar solo comes in though, I'm just thinking like you just grabbed a guitar and did this somehow. But the strings made the the solo coming up. Sorry. Did you grab your guitar and make this happen? Right here. Oh, those noises? Yeah. Like, this is an awesome solo. It's the only reason to listen to the whole song. Like, <laughs> it's this the only is reason right to listen. Here. <laughs> this right here, this moment. I don't know that that was guitar, honestly. It, it has that feeling, though, doesn't it? Like, noodling. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, when you think about it, I haven't thought about it that hard until now. It does kind of feel like a guitar. With some crazy. His guitar is the absolute heck. I think if you did play our live show, you should probably do this one on the guitar. <laughs> I can't play guitar. <laughs> what? I have a little bit. Sometimes I need like acoustic guitar chords. Don't or... ruin our dreams. Oh, James. sorry. No, no, no. I'll learn for you, obviously. Thank you. I'll learn for you. <laughs> or I'll, what is that? Finger sync it. Oh, gosh. that was That's the best track of the whole album, in my opinion. It's it. It is good. Well, what are you working on now? What are we? What, what should we do next? What's uh? What's cooking? What's popping? What's breaking and bopping? Wow, so many questions. It's all the same question. Yeah, it's true. How do I break this down between break? I was and stalling. No, that's very good. What am I doing? That's a podcast <laughs> theme. That's a podcast theme. That's the thing I really want to talk about, but cannot. Oh, oh, uh, that's a podcast theme. <laughs> They're making uh, podcast themes. Working on a video game where that teaches kids how to play piano, which is really nice. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Writing a book. Which is you like writing a book? Yeah, which is like the most horrible thing someone can say to you. Cause like <laughs> cause you're like, no, you're not. You're really not. <laughs> no, and then you're, not. you're like, I have to act like I'm interested in someone's book. But that's true. I'm interested that you're writing a book. Yeah, that's not true. necessarily in the book, unless you can yeah. tell me what it's about and I get interested. But that's no, kind of interesting. I won't do that to you. But yeah, don't do that yeah, to it's, us. It's really nice. Music theory, beat matching. No, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Nancy Drew. If everyone was really worried, what was wrong with Nancy Drew? It's so like Nancy Drew on drugs. Yeah, but not literally. But yeah, right. I had I was informed the other day that my main character is completely insane, and I hadn't actually realized that. I thought she was just <laughs> dedicated. And uh, oh, they're just dedicated. Mm. Well, that's interesting. So who's reading this uh, book of yours and giving you feedback? You know, 
people floating about. Okay. <laughs> the <laughs> <You> mysterious. <know. laughs> yes. This is why we say the mysterious rape message cylinder. Oh my gosh. People floating about. Yeah. Always a surprise with you. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm, that could be. Well, now I want to be more surprising, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that you're writing a book and you're just letting people who float about read it is a surprise. <laughs> I mean, I know the people. <laughs> Here, read this. I'm, I'm on street corners being like, hold be on. Be surprised. Yeah. You're like, is this main character too dedicated or what do you think? Yeah, right. Right. So it's a mystery. It's a series of mysteries, yes. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Nancy Drew's a mystery. Well, I know. I'm just I'm mm-hmm. trying to tease here. She goes around solving mysteries, but writes down details that have no bearing on anything and starts freaking out about spiders and has a group of first graders that she uses to do her detective work and runs screaming through the streets and lies to everyone <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's like the best book I ever heard now that I say that. Yeah, it doesn't sound bad, actually. No. What age is, is Nancy Drew in, uh, in this book you're writing? Oh, uh, 36. Wow, okay. But none of this actually matters like it does, but there's an overarching thing. Oh, my gosh. I this is actually like a you. gold mine here. I kind of want to read this now. <laughs> Me too. How do we float about in your area? You are floating about in my area. <laughs> <laughs> let's get a, let's get a manuscript. Oh, gosh. I, all right. Is this book going to get – are you going to publish this? Yeah, actually. I, I have someone who will read it and consider representing me. Awesome. Yeah. What's the time? What's your deadline? Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> How does this work? Can you can you write? Do you have to get like the the rights to Nancy Drew though to like publish a book about? Oh, it's not really Nancy Drew. It's just she solves mysteries and is apparently You're characterizing insane. it. Oh, yeah, I, I was just trying to like. Oh, I see. Comparison. Well, that's actually interesting. I'm glad. In a way. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> in a way. From well, some angles. What's interesting about he it almost is that gave you a compliment. Nancy Drew was, uh, you know, a teen. You know, in the book series, right? I guess so. And yeah. she ultimately grew up and had things happen in her life and she went to college. And so the story arc of of Nancy Drew follows Nancy Drew's growing up in a way. Like I from, feel like you're just reading chat GBT responses to us at no, this point. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm I'm very familiar <laughs> with Nancy Drew. I'm very familiar. I, I'm not, honestly, but I, I get the I just knew it was a female, a young female detective mm. or mystery mm-hmm. solver. Right. That's that's as far as I went. Life is full of mystery. True. You know. And then she's 36 now. That's or 37, as you said. I mean, that to me is like. It's not actually Nancy Drew, though, Adam. It's just a. He was just giving us something to hang on. Our, I'm just trying to like just pin back person. to Nancy. I mean, like, that's, no, the, please. that's the hook. Yeah, man. Anything you know about Nancy Drew, like, it would probably just help me. Does this it. pin back to Nancy? Well, he said so. It's like a Nancy Drew. It's a, it's a series of mysteries. There's a spider that keeps repeating. She's like, <laughs> why is the spider <laughs> repeated? Is this like a real spider, like a monster? Is it? It's a real it, spider. It's the okay. repeating. The, so is the, it's plausible fiction. Oh, yeah. There's a there's a actual reason for it, but everything appears supernatural. It's the case of the repeating spider, and then ah. the mystery of the missing missing arm. And what's your intended audience age? Like, is this for adults? Is this for young adults? Is this for I children? swear a lot, a lot. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. it would be you know, kids could read it. But could you release two editions? One for everybody? Yeah, I've know? actually thought about that because I would enjoy reading this aloud to some kids. But yeah, just. No. So why is your protagonist an insane person? God, I didn't know she was insane. Is it just, okay. <laughs> she's me to, <laughs> to a very large extent. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. I mean, I would definitely, I would read this. I'll send you some. Okay. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. Okay. Don't no. apologize yet. Wait till I read it. Yeah. I had to research social security fraud a lot for this. Does that what? Don't give us give hints, any? man. I, w- I want the mystery to be fresh. I don't <laughs> want to have any sort of okay. preconceived notions now. Mm. I can't imagine a world in which a repeating spider would have a natural mm-hmm, mm-hmm. explanation. So I'm very curious. Even better is this is something that happened to me. Not, it's not even what? like there was a repeating spider and I couldn't figure out why it was repeating. And then I found out and blew my mind. Wow. Mm-hmm. I don't understand repeating spider, like literally. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being vague. You, you kept seeing the same spider? There was a dead spider on the second floor of a building, and I flicked it down to the first floor, and then later it was there again. And I was like, spiders are not supposed to repeat. Oh, I see. Oh, did you think there was maybe a glitch in the Matrix? Like it maybe you gl- just went right. back. And she really doesn't like glitches in the Matrix. She wants everything uh-huh. to be orderly and make sense, or she loses her mind. And in this case, there's a reason. Love it. It could be the mimic. 
What's the mimic? And the blood from the mimic. And the blood from the mimic. That was the premise for Tom Cruise's movie with Emmy Blunt, Live, Die, Repeat. Oh, yeah. Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, Edge of One Tomorrow, One of the best yeah. science fiction movies ever. I remember that one being really good, actually. Definitely up there in my list. Yeah? Hmm. What other sci-fi movies do you like? Oh, gosh. Probably my favorite of all. Don't say Tenet. Don't say Prime. Prime? Primer? No, Prime. Oh, oh is it Primer? Primer? The low-budget... Uh, primer? Time machine and a low box budget thing. time machine is called Primer, but it's it's spelled Primer. Oh my bad, Primer. That's all right. No, but you can answer the question. We're just shouting bad movies. <laughs> yes, it's not even a bad he's, movie. He's thinking. I mean, there's just a list. I mean, it's it's a nonstop list. Okay, okay. Give us a five top five. Interstellar. That's one. Tenet. Two. Ready Player One. Three. Dune. What's the what's the movie? There was a 2049 Blade Runner 2049. Oh, that was good. OG Four. Blade Runner, of course. Five. Are you going to count that as one? Blade Runner. I mean, they're together basically. Sure. I'm impressed anybody who could pick up that franchise and make a movie that could. The Dennis guy. Yeah, that was a solid solid film there. Mm-hmm. He also did the Dune movies. You like same director? Yes. And, well, basically anything Christopher Nolan does, I will watch. Yeah, but and that was not the obviously director of that one, but I'll watch anything from him. Yes. And oddly enough, this is not this is not science fiction. This is more th- horror. Well, that's just a different category. <laughs> yeah, I'm just well, looking at my list is all. <laughs> we could see. There might be some genre blending. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. This is where they say they're all gonna laugh at you in that funny voice from the movies. <laughs> uh, Megan. Honestly, it's a really interesting is the doll? AI, you know, present day I haven't seen horror saw movie. It. I mean, uh, so. oh. it's an okay plot. Yeah. You know what's an incredible sci-fi horror movie is Annihilation. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh the my best. gosh. The movie, or the song in there from Hollow Notes in there though? I mean, like just stellar is on there? point. Yeah, I think it's Hollow Notes. There's a lot of like folk music, like folk guitar, which is really unnerving for some reason. And the ending music where I won't give anything away, but Natalie oh Portman gosh, the music is so good. the space melon, uh, that will haunt me a Till I die. That is yeah. incredible. You have to come to my house and watch it because that's where it's the best. Right. You said theater. You have a theater? Yeah, I have a theater in my house. And you'll you'll love it. Hell yes. I'm trying to find the song. There's a song from that I'm trying to think of what it is. It's worth it. Okay. It's when he comes back mm. and he's come up the stairs, that song. And she's painting. Oh, in the beginning, yeah. Okay. Yes, that song. You know far more about Hollow Notes than I do. I don't actually think it's Hollow Notes. That's why I'm really curious if I'm wrong because I don't think it is. All right, well. But I'm a big fan of Annihilation. I own it on 4K. If I own it on 4K, I love the movie. That's just how it works. Yeah, that's... Let me name a few sci-fi movies that didn't make your list, which maybe you'll have to... You'll have to add them as I say them. Okay. Because you left off some pretty good movies, although, you know, you you can't name just five. Who can do Mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. But, for instance, you left off Terminator 2. Mm -hmm. You left off The Matrix. You left off... Aliens, you left off the original Planet of the Apes. Are these the ones that just go without saying because they're just so... Kind of. Yeah. But I said them. There's a few you left off the list. How about this one? Minority Report. Mm. Mm. That was an early movie obsession of mine. That was so good. Yeah, that was a good one. Spielberg. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I was so off. Sorry. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Helplessly Hoping. I mean the the harmony. Sorry to interrupt, Jared. The harmony of that, of those folks singing that track. They have good harmony. <laughs> so good. What's, just what's the track called? It's called "Helplessly Hoping." Pull it up on Spotify. "Helplessly Hoping" and play for us. Murder Bear. Okay, give me a second. Stalin BMC. Stalin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it through that. That was uh, gargling solo. A for effort. Thank you. Oh yeah. Right. That was so good. Yeah. Such a good track. The harmonizing is where it's at. You're right. This is the only real track, like real song in the whole movie. Everything else is like made for this movie soundtrack. It's like acoustic guitar, which is totally opposite what's happening on screen, and it feels good. 
And then there's the Space Melon music, which is terrifying. Space Melon? Yeah, when Natalie Portman gazes into the melon. We have to have a... Actually, how about this? We'll come out of this show with a, a prescription. The prescription is to go rewatch Annihilation or pick your favorite scene, the ending scene when everybody gets enveloped, and uh, make a Space Melon song for us. Those those bass beats. Those bass notes. It's like, yes. I mean, like, we'll have to suck in the audience into this one. Like, that's what will happen. How terrifying does your show ever get, though, really? It might have to get a, cr- a little scary. <laughs> <Let's> yeah. <be laughs> real. We're going to start fear mongering. You know, the AI is coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the AI. That's... I mean, people are kind of afraid right now, honestly. Are they really? I think so. Just in general or AI? Software developers, you know, our livelihoods are, at, are potentially at stake. You know, people are getting laid off. Mm. They're getting told that they're going to be replaced by machines. I mean, I think mm. that if there was a time of fear in the software developer community, True. this is probably the highest it's been. Because there hasn't really been a reason to be afraid of anything besides maybe the Y2K bug. But not because of our podcast, though. They're not necessarily scared because of our shows. No. <laughs> not yet. I wasn't suggesting you were causing the fear. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you discuss the fear. You don't actively yeah. terrorize people. We don't fear monger, no. Not uh, not yet. Not until you have the soundtrack. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, it, I I so to go back. Uh, I did not mention the Matrix. I'm sorry. That is in my list on 4K. I was I was going with more modern. I suppose. No, it's all good. We put you on the spot. I mean, there's there's too many good movies to just name five. Yeah. You know? Gosh. I mean, just so many, so many good movies. But yeah, the Matrix and Minority Report. I guess they also were kind of coming out when I was coming of age, and so. Those stick in my head as just like very... The Matrix is probably the most influential sci-fi movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Where I still think about it. Ex Machina. Ex Machina is good. I like that. That's the Annihilation guy too. Yeah. Everything he does is disturbing as heck. Yeah. That is disturbing. I am a fan of of The Matrix, obviously, and I'm a big fan of Minority Report. I think that was a movie ahead of its time, honestly. For sure. You know what was good was Looper. Did you guys see Looper? Yeah, yes. that's a good yeah, that's one. a good one. Maybe not not top five, but good. I mean, I'm a if there's a time travel movie out there, I'm gonna watch it. And that's not like your typical time travel movie, but there's time involved, and it's really interesting. Yeah, I would say that I kind of get I get uh, mad at time travel movies because it's so hard to get to do well and to do right, mm-hmm. and there's always like problems. But Looper actually has a pretty good consistency to it yeah they don't bother explaining the mechanism too much which i like yeah exactly like it's not the main point it's just there it's like it's like a small little story really exactly it also happens to be true that you can which you kind of have to do that because the more you make it about the time travel the more you think about it the more the concepts break down you know yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. there's still parts of tenet i cannot understand to this day are we sure that's a good movie which to me is 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 a sign of a bad movie. Are we sure that's a good movie? <laughs> this might be, you might, I might pour you out into the trash. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> don't, my sauce. Don't speak against the tenant. I agree. I watched it. I did not understand it. And then <sighs> I went through the podcast with uh, our heavy spoilers friend and Adam, and we talked yeah. all about it. And I came out thinking, I don't need to think about that movie ever again. Like, it doesn't really. Really? Yeah. What a shame, Jared. Nah. There's so many things to think about. Aren't there a lot of like plot twists that are obvious from the first second of the movie? That's what I seem to remember. Well, I'm not here to rag on your your movie. You like? I just it's I too deep to go that. into. It's okay. it's got a lot of layers. We'll go I'm not that. saying it's the best movie ever, but it's definitely when you compare time travel movies mm. of all time travel movies. In my mm. opinion, that movie will go down in history as as one of the most difficult to pull off mm. and a masterpiece. When compared to time travel movies, as a movie and plot, not absolutely the best movie ever, but really well done with time. Like you can't deny that from that movie. I value your opinion and assessment. Oh, I it's will, solid. I, will... I mean, they did a great <laughs> job with it. I'll watch it again because if you like it, yeah. Even from a cinema, you know, a, sh- a shooting standpoint, a cinematography standpoint, it's super well done. A lot mm. of detail. That's mm. a good filmmaker. I keep wanting something to top Inception, but I feel like that was... Inception was great. I, I feel like that movie gets ragged on a bit, but that was my favorite Nolan, probably. I liked it a lot. Mm. Well, Memento for me is still his ah, best, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
talk about good execution on a good idea. I mean, that was mm-hmm. a good idea that was hard to pull off, and mm-hmm. he pulled it off well. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. That should be too hard to keep track of when you're watching it, but you could just barely hold the thread. You know? Yeah. I mean, you can follow it, though. It's They do a good job of, like, just yeah, pulling you along. At the end, though, there's no resolution. You know, like you, you kind of just, like, you're, like, where you began, in mm. a way. Yeah. There's a realization. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no resolution. There's yeah. a realization, of course. No, you, but, you realize what's happening, but there's no resolution to the challenge that he's dealing with. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. As a character. Like, sure. you're just going to keep repeating. Yeah, and exactly. You kind of feel bad for him because, like, there, it's perpetual. It's not going to end. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way. Well, I, I don't think we spoiled anything, really. We just... <laughs> you just he's spoiled totally him. screwed. There's, you just said there's no resolution. He's going to continue to live on with it. That doesn't that doesn't describe that anything though. That yeah, but no. if you watch the first fifteen minutes, now you know what the problem is, and then you remember what Adam said. Now you know what the solution doesn't happen. But you don't know the details. I'm going to drop a spoiler horn. Is my point? Okay, drop a spoiler horn. I will. That's fine with me. That's all. It has. We, we need a mini spoiler horn because they're not always big spoilers. That reminds me, BMC made our spoiler horn for us. I know. Did I? Yeah, you did. You made us seven spoiler horns. <laughs> play that spoiler horn, Jared. Can you play? I think it? I only use one of them, mm. like a klaxon or like a horn. No, we wanted it to be like a. Uh, it's almost like here comes a steamboat. Like burp, burp, burp. I actually can't play it right now because I'm I'm dialed into a different soundboard. But you'll remember it when you hear it. It kind of sounds like here comes a giant freight boat. You know, it's gonna hit a it's gonna hit a bridge. And there's like a stutter out. Is it fog Well, there's horn? like seven different versions. Yeah, kind of like a fog horn. Okay, yes, I remember this. I forgot that was and the purpose. And there's some stutter outs. There's some non-stutter outs. You just gave us different iterations. Yeah, that sounds right. Anyways, you made so much music and sounds in your life, you can't even remember. But you've never made a book. Is this your first book? <laughs> yes. So exciting. What 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 inspired you to write a book? Why did you decide to do this? Um, What the book is actually about is nothing I've hinted at and I just had an idea like 10 years ago and it's just been mulling in my head and if I have an idea that sticks with me at least like three months I will finally just do it and this was a little more complicated so it took like 10 years okay it's just anything I'm obsessed with and I'm obsessed with it I I do this all the time I can't Mm -hmm. focus on anything but it when I'm walking around so it just happens love it it's like a repeat spider you know you Mm -hmm. can't get rid of it Yep, yep, yep. Just keeps coming back. Can't flick it away, I know. All right, BMC. Well, if this episode of our podcast was an airplane in flight, mm-hmm. I'm drawing. I'm drawing a picture now. Okay. How would you, as the as the captain of uh-huh. said airplane, how would mm-hmm. you land this plane gracefully? I don't know how to fly a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so Do you know how to end sorry, a both conversation because I apparently don't no, either. I don't know to. You just make music and books, and you let us land podcast planes. Yeah, let neurotypical people. We're typical yeah. people. No, neurotypical people. Let them end. Uh, oh, I see. I couldn't conversations. Do your do your audience identify as autistic? Would you say largely? Would our audience identify? Well, we can't yeah. identify a collective. You know. Fair. It's like, Fair enough. But I'm sure there's probably autistic people in our audience, as there are probably... I feel like the people that I know who are programmers... There's definitely a higher percentage, I believe, of overlap there. I think you're yeah. probably onto something. Cool. Adam, you're neurotypical, I think. I don't know what that means exactly every time, but <laughs> <laughs> can you can you land this podcast plane? I can, and I will. Okay. I will land it by saying one, two, three, four. You are now in my trance, and this is the end of the podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that was actually a good line. You have lyrics in this one, drum and space. I'll leave with that, because that, to me, is probably one of the best recent beats you've made. Oh, in my yeah. Opinion. Yeah, drum and space was pretty awesome. Have you seen this one yet, Jared? I think so. Does it say one, two, three, four? It's, it does say that. Those are some lyrics, man. That is one, lyrics. two, three, four. It took me about four seconds to write. I love that one. Yeah, I mean, it's I've just a, the best. I've been it's using the best. that. So we're going to end it with that. Yeah, this is the new outro track for this track, at least. We'll, we'll end this show with Drum and Space. There you go. Okay, beautiful. So bye. 
Thank you, BMC, for being the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder, the Beats Freak in Residence, the ultimate beat maker of all time, yeah. the sauce I pour on all my favorite podcasts. <laughs> the conditioner that we put on our episodes. You special uh, three-in-one, you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Shake you up and pour you out. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. Bye. One, two, three, four. If you dig the vibes, check out the new album by searching for Changelog Beats in your favorite music app and finding the Dance Party album. If you just search for Dance Party, there's a lot of results. So start with Changelog Beats. We are one of a kind. We do have a Changelog Plus Plus bonus for those of you who like to make our shows even better. Adam continues to give BMC weird descriptives. I critique a Justin Timberlake song and BMC, BMC does what BMC does. If you haven't signed up for Plus Plus, now's a great time to directly support our work. Get yourself in on extended episodes like this one, make the ads disappear, and more. Learn all about it at changelog.com slash plus plus. Thanks once again to our partners at fly.io and to our friends at Sentry. We love Sentry and have been using it for years. When it's time for you to check it out, use code changelog, all one word, and save 100 bucks off a team plan. Have a great weekend. Give us a five-star review if you dig it. And let's talk again real soon. You are on my transfer a moment there. I saw your eyes. You glazed over for about a half a second. Yes, I, I was. I almost didn't let you say out. anything for the rest of the time. I was kind of here for it. I was like, is he going to just end this by transifying all of us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wake up and it's tomorrow. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You got to come for the surprise, you know? Mm-hmm. Can't come for the what you know. It's better.